Africa is one of the fastest growing regions in the world, but does it have the right trade policy to make that growth sustainable? Hey, I'm Sam George, and today we're looking at the effects of trade integration on growth in Africa. Now, Africa is 54 very different countries and over a billion people, and there's no one size fits all to its economics, but there are certain trends we can pick out. Both international and intercontinental trade have ancient histories in Africa, often with little regard to the state boundaries later invented by Europeans and superimposed on the map. During the colonial period, European powers reoriented African economies towards exports of raw materials, such as cotton, copper, coffee, diamonds, and later oil, at times maximizing the short-term output while sacrificing long-term sustainability. This created a reliance on raw material exports that extended well beyond colonialism and well beyond the Cold War and on into the current era of independence. Commodity reliance does not mean that Africa is not getting richer. There are definitely buyers for what many African countries are selling, especially given the rapid rise of Asian commodity consumers such as China. The Asian push has helped make Africa one of the globe's fastest growing regions, a major destination of foreign direct investment, and bit by bit, a player in global trade. In Africa, just as in the rest of the world, bilateral and multilateral trade agreements are becoming increasingly important. Though Africa is not part of major international negotiations and agreements such as TPP and TTIP, it has consolidated into interior economic zones, including the South African Development Community, the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, and the East African Community. That last one, the EAC, became a common market in 2010 and has been particularly rewarding for landlocked participants like Rwanda that do not have their own external ports. African trade agreements can also help bolster internal demand. Right now, Africa conducts only about 12% of its trade with other African countries. That's just about a fifth of internal European trade percentage. If done correctly, trade integration could help Africa build manufacturing supply chains and deepen its service sector. The key word here is if. For the time being, African countries don't conduct much trade with each other, and the different African blocs may have a protecting effect as opposed to facilitating integration. That's why some are so excited for the Africa Free Trade Zone, a new agreement that would combine the three major existing PACs. Now, the Africa Free Trade Zone has a lot of potential, but there's also still a lot of work that needs to be done to make it a reality. And even then, as we have said before, just signing deals on paper doesn't always create trade on the ground. So what does that all mean moving forward? Well, you can check out our full study on African trade integration online here, or hang with us for part two of this video, where we zoom in on the case of South Africa.